Hi guys, Spectre Gaming. Welcome back to more Total Warhammer 2. Uh, oh yeah, we're at this turn, aren't we? Yes. 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 I've elected the option this time to stay put. Because <laughs> I know I tried fighting the Bretonians. I tried fighting against Dalthorin after my army got a bit shagged. I'm going to see if this shields anything better results. He's done what I, I was going to do, fair enough. I just wanted to take out one of the Bedonian armies. What the hell happened there? At least Conny Hellebron's arm is moving the right direction. Don't know where he's going. And Deathmaster's gone all the way back down towards Krotgar's starting location. Get your arse up here, you goddamn coward. At the moment there, the, the Fae Enchantress's name looks like the Fae Enchantress. <laughs> I don't know why you'd go right into the middle of the enemy army like that. She's backing off, okay. There's the time. Right, the items have all changed, Alan's. Yeah, right, okay. Your immortal buddy, I'll re recruit you if I get a chance. But I need the money. I can't afford three arms at the moment. Well, there it's almost half. So it's going to be about half, maybe a bit more than half, to attack that guy. But even then, next turn, Eltharion can move there. It can force March if need be. She can move up here. I'm not worried about that, she's a lord. He can move to there, probably a bit further. Oh, that is in force, actually. Emperor can move to there, they're in force. Do you take me for a child? 
There's so Econ Force in there. Econ Force in there. I'll ignore that. I will not blight my soul. And if I can't get back to the city, Go. even Sorry, then I'm probably going to need a turn of replenishment because no. it never gives me a good auto resolve. Ready. Save over this before I move. See if we can get a good auto resolve against this. Why do I not get a good auto resolve against that? Your arm is shit. Makes no sense. Makes no fucking sense. <laughs> I actually probably should have voted resolved it first and see how far I can move back. I think I need B40. Okay, oh, what have we got? What have we got it? Let's have a look. Oh, fucking hell, work's took it at me today. Super fucking tired. They weren't even that busy. Actually. Hellstones are actually a bit out of range, so I'm going to move back a little bit here. I get these invisible. They ain't got stalk. I might even cheese this a bit actually. I'm not gonna cheese my Aussie yet. And at this point we are many fucking enemies I've got coming up my map as well. Oh, 
Oh shit. Fucking Luminarch hit me. What this is doing, for those who don't know, this is just basically... The Hellstorms are really good against units, but they're shite against single entities. So what you can do is you can make them waste the ammo by getting in range. The AI just shoots the first target. So it's three most dangerous range units to me. The handguns can do some damage, but I'm not going to go and try and waste all the handguns ammo. But I'll quite happily waste his Hellstorms. Because they can do a lot of damage to my Black Orcs, which we've seen in the past. And I've not used any cheese in this entire campaign. So I think I've more than earned the right to use some fucking cheese. So I um, just wanted to get rid of his health storms and make them basically useless. Because without ammo, they can't do any big damage or anything like that. They're just a fucking artillery crew. And they've been cheating their ass off the entire campaign. I shall quite happily return the favour. And my allies have been completely fucking useless, so...
And so I took this kind of damage without the fucking Hellstorm rocket batteries. Imagine if it had had them with ammo. Would have been a lot worse. been a lot lot worse so by him not having them they got one kill which was in melee <laughs> which was probably one of those um one of my spider hatchlings or one of my black oaks still do way too much damage to my black oaks though that that is what black oaks need i definitely You've seen the picture of that now. They definitely need buffing up in terms of toughness. They're supposed to be the toughest orcs around, the and they're really not. They're really, really not. An insult to Everest. Gulk, send me to battle. I'm off. Pringles on the fucking move. Oh, I know where these two need to go. So I, I want these two to get immortal, immortality. Once they've got immortality, I can, if I want to, I can basically get rid of them. I can like uh, disband them because then I can get them back. So I know nobody can make it to Black Crag unless they go in March Dance. If they go in March Dance, I can attack one Lightning Strike and then attack other with the garrison included and wipe them out. I mean, even these down here, I don't get this. So he's got seven units in the Black Arc. The rank seven, but he's got seven units. Why is he not recruiting the other thirteen? You can have black arc units basically be free. They're not free, but they're close to it because they can be worth so little. You can get all the units practically under a hundred gold upkeep. Apart from maybe some of the bigger single entities. You can drive the cost so far down.
Ugh. Those fucking level 40 witch hunts have been a fucking pain the entire goddamn game. There's another one. Was that Balthazar Gelt's army? No, no, there he is. I'm about to say, fuck it, huh? It can move entirely too far. So, what this is a test of anyway, what it started out with from episode 1, is armies of all melee units, not doom stacks. I don't want doom stacks. I don't mind a few single entities in there, but I don't want fucking like half my army. Doom stacks are boring to play, they're too easy. Um, and then I didn't want to use magic with like a shaman, shall I say. I don't mind the river hag troll, but her magic's not very good anyway, to be fair with you. Um, but the shamans have a lot of utility and they can bring a lot to the field. Magic being as powerful as it is can be uh Get going, boys. Sniffing out war can be quite decent. So, without shamans, I'm probably without a little bit arranged. I'd probably say not much, like either a couple of rock lobbers or a couple of goblin doom divers. I probably do. Just two. I think three would be a bit much, so just about two. I'd probably do it. And then one orc shaman in every army. Grungor, you just keep moving, buddy. Again. Right, options here. Reading this like a knobhead. Of, of course he is. Even though, as well, I wish to change this, remove it or whatever. Why have reading stance for Bretonians if it's minus two chivalry per turn? And if you are going to have it so the players can use it, at least make it so the AI doesn't want to. Because whenever I raid someone, as a player, I have massive repercussions from there forward because I've raided someone. Make it so that AI don't use it. They shouldn't get to use something that is negative for us. And they clearly don't suffer or care about the negatives. Um, right, I've got Althorian's army there, which is pretty strong. Really fucking annoying because he's got units that can kite and shoot as well as having the Sword of Cain. Not possible. That army's dog shit, but I can't really do anything to it with all that lot there. Not likely. His army's stronger, but nothing I'm really scared of. You that me. army's quite scary. Because that's Grail Knights, Knights of the Realm, there's Grail Guardians there, 
Well, Hippogriff Knights, Pegasus Knights. That's quite a nasty army. I refuse. His army is basically dead. I'm not worried about his army. I will not blight my soul. But they can all hit me next turn. So I'd be facing like four or five armies. So I can't hold Black Crag. At this point, it is not possible. What I can do is get the fuck out of dodge. My fighting's done. It's now. Let's see what the al al allies can do. It's now a test of the allies. Let's see if they can be as half as useful as I want them to be. And that's only half as useful, not completely useful. I managed to disband the second army. I don't know how long. I mean, I'm, I'm being raided anyway, which is going to obviously take to it. What's my actual upkeep on the army? Hmm. I'll try and keep what units I can. Problem is, is the scrap. Disband all the units, you've got to get all the scrap again. But then again, it can build up over the turns. I mean, realistically, I'd get rid of all the Black Orcs. Because the Skulkers, I'd need to train from scratch, which would be really annoying. And I mean, I could maybe get rid of the Regiment Renown, Ragnarok as well, because I can be a recruiter. I just have to get the scrap again. Uh, that one, though, I can't be recruit. So if I get rid of it, it's gone. And the Giants take a while to get to rank 9, so I'd rather not get rid of the Giants either if I can avoid it. What's Crown Hellebron going to do? Malice is going to do nothing because his army's complete shit. It's pretty much all I've had the entire campaign from Malice and Malekith. Two of their strongest legendary lords and they've both done jack shit. Because they recruit armies of fucking Dread Spears and Corsairs with handbills. Intentions of fighting it. <laughs> Fucking look how many armies are there. Oh, here comes another army. And that's very similar to the other army, just low ranked. How's he got ahead of Gringo? Is he after Gringo? Gringo will murder your ass.
strongest, mainest. Keep an eye on that little prick. Where's he going? I know what could stop me. What? Look for carrion. I'll crush them all. Let's go. On the wrong the neighborhood, time. buddy. It's not the reading's gone. That you me is pretty tough. We're down to that. Yeah, there's an awful lot of them, I'll be honest. There's an awful lot on them. More than I can do anything about at this point, I think. You're going into all that, you're mad. Rath is recruiting another army. It's not bad. Some of the last one, but it's only 16 strong for some reason. And see, this is... Um, it's not something you can always avoid. It depends on where you start and who you're playing. And if you want to go for your short or long campaign victory. Because the long campaign one, you know, takes longer to get, it's harder to get. This, if you're playing a evil faction, or a half and half faction that's kind of neutral, this can happen to you, I, I would probably say seven times out of ten. Some people have told me they get a lot less than that, they get more like four out of ten. I would say you're extraordinarily lucky. I... I get order tied in my campaigns, I would say at least six campaigns out of ten. But probably more seven than six. But I don't always get beat by it because if I've got short rich condition so short campaign rich conditions I can achieve before they get rolling, I complete it and win the campaign. Basically it becomes a race. Is if I can complete my campaign victories, my my campaign requirements, before they get to this stage. If I can do that, I can still win before, before they get here. If I can't do that, then I'm dead. <laughs> but I'd say I probably win 
I probably win 80-90% of my campaigns. But I don't generally play green skins. Green skins aren't a faction I generally play. I don't mind playing them, I enjoy playing them. They're much more interesting to me than an army like Empire. Empire are much more dull and boring. But, um... Actually, no, I'll do with these. I want that now because I can do it with the other guys. Bring, yeah, bring these back here. to get rid of this army or at least a lot of it this is my land probably those as well one of them will make a big difference to be fair the time. they won't I mean, I can move some of these into Gringo's army, and then... They're making like a fucking half doomstack though, sort of a thing. Why? I see you've recruited that again. That's driving me insane. He's recruited all Dread Spears and fucking Corsairs with handbows again. That's like the fourth army in a row he's done that with. Why is he recruiting that at this many turns into the game? And when Marathi and Crone Hellebron have been recruiting better armies? Because there's a maxed out tier 5 settlement on the island where Malice starts. And then he's also got to have some maxed out black arcs by now in the ocean here. Why isn't he recruiting better troops? Why does he keep recruiting crap armies? I don't understand why the AI is so useless when they become an eye. You get military alliance, and they just do nothing. Uh, 
Keep moving. Eat charge. You better move. No one. Send me to battle. Moment, I'm not saving it because nothing bad can really happen to me at the moment. What's bad's basically already happened is useless allies. I mean, even that, that's a regular Dark Elf Lord. Even she's recruited a better army. The Malekith. The Malekith spawns down there in that little settlement and recruits that shit. Why? You can recruit better armies than that. One of the High Elves earlier on was globally recruiting in rank 4 better units. So why can't my allies do the same? Why do they recruit shit? Is it a thing they've put into the game to make your allies less useful? I don't get it. I really they don't get it. I don't understand what programming they're using for. The AIs, it's really odd. Now I've shrunk my army down, he's chasing me. <laughs> I like as well, though, how they're running past every single Skaven settlement. They're not attacking the Skaven at all. Just coming straight for me. What do you want? Bone for war. from the front. They're not at war with the battalions. Are you kidding me, dude? We have ears to listen. Impossible. That's why they're coming straight for me. So they're not at war with the high elves or the battalions, they're just coming straight for the territory straight for me. Great. You have a lot of use, um, Deathmaster. Just go! A second hand condom would be more useful than you. No slacking. They're a 
for it. Get close to our place. Too far. Soon I feed first. <sighs> Try to. Yeah, they're all just following. And because the High Elves and Bretonians aren't at war with him, they're not attacking his settlements, and his armies aren't attacking them. He's just walking straight past them. Great. So he's only at war with half the Order Tide, the Dwarves and the Empire. He's not at war with um, the High Elves and Bretonians, so they're just chasing me to my last settlement. Not biased at all against the player. That's lovely how that works. Jesus. Ah. And that's why all these factions are coming in. All these factions are coming in the ones that aren't at war with um, Ishin. But surely walking through his territory must piss him off. We'll get rid of two of those and two of these. Still a massive minus. Not as much I can do about it. Whoa. 
but on the plus side though, 180k. It'll last a while. Well, it'll it'll last until these guys get to me anyway. So then we'll see what the AI actually does. If Ishin steps in, if he doesn't, if the Dark Elves manage to do something. Ah, that's twice I've hit that. Malachi for this very useful army of shit. As soon as it's just Grimgore's arm, he's like, oh no, I cannot beat this. I must back away. Or I will get my face stamped in. Don't need him either. <laughs> so I've got what I've got. Him, her. One chieftain, two chieftains. That's fine. Let's go. On the river. And this is also one of the things that's quite annoying as well, where you have an AI counterpart like uh, not Malakif but like Ishin who's at war with half the Order Tide with the Dwarves and Empire but he's not at war with the Bretonians or the um, High Elves when he should be at war with them in theory plus they're walking all through his territory so they should be getting massive trespassing penalties and he seems to give zero fucks what he doesn't realise is if they killed me a Malekith, he'd be next. So he's better off attacking them now while he has our support. Obviously, if I die, the game's over anyway, sort of thing. But that's, that's not how the AI operates. Boss? Now? 
I'm doing this purely so I can see them coming. So I've got kind of like an early warning system, sort of. So she's there. She can see him coming down that way. He can see him coming down that way. He's at the crossroads down here. And then last guy in the chain is there. And then I'll either defend it as a siege or I'll defend it by being ambushed dance outside it as it comes down to it. And we'll see what happens. The other thing that would also, obviously, but people have been talking about this for a long time, that would make the, uh, a big change, is the Chaos Invasion actually being scary. Obviously, them having ambush dance back would be a big part of that. But also having a mechanic similar to that of the Beastmen, so they can stop armies like the Ordertide from recognizing settlements so easily. Because the, the it looks scary at first when they're spawning with 21 armies. And you've got obviously level 40, Archeon, Colex, Sigvald and the Great Demon as inch. But they're not actually scary. They're not. They don't do anything. And they've only got to kill Archeon, Sigvald and Colex to wipe all the armies out. Which is also really fucking stupid. It shouldn't be wiped those to be out of the Chaos Invasion's halted. Yes, you should have to wipe out every single army. Because then if they die, they can respawn in one of those armies. And they're the front three armies. So if they're all up there waiting for them, they just kill those first three armies and that's it. Invasion over. It's really, really stupid how it operates. The Order Tide has had so much leeway on this second game. I know the first game had some Doom Tide stuff going off. Where the Chaos Invasion was quite scary. But... It was still 50-50. You'd get 50% Doom Tide, 50% Order Tide. In this one, it's been 70-80% Order Tide the entire game since 2017. That's five years of Order Tide. I want the fucking Doom Tide back. He's 225, she's 150. Right, yes, get rid of him. Didn't want to, but I had to. Could help on with a 14 stack. <laughs> what is she gonna do? Looks like they're going for um, Malekith first. At least they're not coming for me straight away. I'm gonna say they seem to be bypassing all the Skaven shit and coming straight for me. And at least they've got the Black Arcs there that can put up a decent fight in the ocean.
Ugh. One strength I will say that horde armies have got over um, the faction based armies. Obviously they're a bit more vulnerable at the start when you've only got one army and if you lose that army you're wiped out, that's it, game over. But as soon as you've got your second and your third arm, stuff like that, and you're a bit safer, you're a bit more comfortable. What do you want? Mork says what? Let's get stabby. They, uh... What? This way. Yes, boss. They um, have the ability where they can just take off and run away. You haven't got to worry about your last settlement getting taken. Where you then start taking attrition. That's why I came down here and got this. I knew it wasn't going to sustain even one army. But the idea was that if I could have got a full province, I could have sustained this army. And maybe got back into a small minus. But it shouldn't have taken everything. I could have even done with this here. Even that could have probably done it. But, um... I forgot what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sometimes when the AI as well faces annihilation, they get like a second wind almost, where they come back ridiculously strong. I'm hoping... Well, maybe not him. I'm hoping um, the Dark Elves can do that, or if not, that Ishin will actually get involved in the war with the Bretonians and the High Elves and do something. But yeah, like um, having to get that town, that was basically just to stop myself from um, it was just to um, stop myself from taking Trishan. So I, I needed at least one last settlement somewhere. I don't get where this treaties from Nagaron and stuff's coming from. I really don't. What treaty am I getting? That's minus in 25. That's gone up consistently the entire time. I don't know what that is. That's weird. Dangerous, my dear. 
That she won that fight? What? Okay, maybe her army scaled higher in the auto resolve. She had 14 units against his 20 and somehow won. So if they start recruiting some decent armies from there, which is what I'm hoping Malakith and Malice might fucking do, maybe they can push them back. Although well, they seem to be attacking Skeever now, have they declared war on him? Or well, somebody is. Yes, they have. So rather than me getting war with him, they've declared war on him. So Bretonians and High Elves are now at war with the Shin. So you've now gone from 43 settlements down to 29. Is Shin? Might be time that you do something. You know? Where the fuck are all your armies? If I had 43 settlements for as long as you did, I'd have armies fucking everywhere, dude. I'd have armies everywhere. They'd be ranked 9 to fucking tits. And they'd be everywhere. How? How is your army not ranked 9? How? How is he not ranked 40? You've had 229 turns and you've only been at war with the Dwarves and Empire. And in that time you've sent a total of three armies up north. So what the fuck has been going off with these armies? I don't get it. What have my allies been doing this entire time? I'm playing a campaign on stream as well with um, Imric and my friend Overlords playing um, Alariel. And I've got into a predicament down here where it can happen sometimes, it can go either way. Um, Clan of Shin can declare war on you rather than Malice first, and it comes for you. But because he's come for me and he can't take in my territory, he's not building any very good troops. He's got like armies of Skeev and Sleeves, so they can't even beat my garrisons. Um, but then Grimgo, he does it every now and then. It's like one in 50 campaigns. Normally Grimgo will either go north into the Dwarf Territory or he'll come south and attack Clan Moors and the killing the Dwarves and stuff on the way. Sometimes he'll come over to the right-hand side instead. He'll go east and he'll come towards Imric. Very rarely happens, at least until later on in the, the campaign. But it has happened, and I've killed like three or four of his armies now in a row. I've killed Grimgore twice. But because they are raiding here, and I've got Ishin raiding here and here, I've got armies raiding me for money, I've got no money coming in. And I was running my armies back and forth, killing Skaven and Greenskin armies. So Imric and his armies getting ranked up to fuck, because they're not losing any battles, or beating them. But what I did is, I managed to confederate... Hoeth. So I've got a city and two towns over here that I'm building up. So if I need to, I can literally disband Imric, get rid of the armies, sell all the shit for money, abandon them, and just restart over another one. <laughs> because this back and forth bollocks normally doesn't happen. You normally might have to deal with the Shin, but then I could have pushed in there and taken him out by now. But I've had to run back and fight Grimgore. So it stopped me from 
progressing. I'm basically stuck in a loop. <laughs> Fucking AI, I swear, sometimes they just... They, they do the most... The worst thing you can do to fuck a player, and they, they do it against me a lot. I said most of the time I beat them anyway. Most of the time I do, but... Again, like, High Elves are a really, really strong army. And you've got access to allies, Dwarves, Empire, Britonia, who can also come and help you. Greenskins don't. Greenskins don't. Good. That's not good at all. River Draw Hag. Between this and this, I'm not great at maths, I'll be honest. One of my weaker classes. I've probably got about 40 or so turns before this runs out. And what I think I'll do is... If I get to say sixty thousand, I get to say 60,000 or something else that prompts it in the meantime. I'll break non aggression with Clannishin and I'm going to start taking his, his stuff. So I can build back up. Otherwise, I'm going to be screwed. Well, I'm probably screwed anyway, to be fair. <laughs> My campaigns by now are normally over with me having won them. I don't normally get. To like turn 200. I'd say my campaign's normally complete by turn 130 to 170? Maybe 180? That's my single player campaigns. Multiplayer campaigns are obviously much longer, but that's because you need 140 settlements, which is a time consuming thing to do. But I don't mind that it's a grand strategy game, it's supposed to take some time. I think one of my shortest campaigns I've ever played was. I believe. It was. Uh... Oh god, what's his name now? Guy normally starts, starts an orc one. But the the green skin. Let's go. I got his fucking name. Grom. Grom the Paunch. Um, one of my shortest campaigns was him. I think I beat his campaign in less than 100 turns. 
because I um, I basically got the Elven Tide and then the Empire Tide and the Bretonian Tide came at me. But what I did were, well, they went to my main province where my second army was. My first army, Grom, went across, captured Toy of Res and the three towns. Now, for whatever reason, they didn't come back over and chase me. I don't know why. They came at me really early on. They came at me quite quickly. Um, and I think his campaign is to do with capturing enough stuff over there. If I'm not mistaken. And um, I completed it fairly quickly. I can sometimes see why the green skins go against Skaven though, because the armies that I'm building, I'd have such an easy time wrecking Skaven. Because the units that have been giving me the most trouble have been melee units. And Skaven's melee units are all shit. Especially what he's recruiting in his armies. Looks like we aren't going to have to wait. See, I, I like this because now Clannishin has been forced to do something. They've been useless the entire campaign. He had 43 summons before they started taking his stuff. And now he's at a very, very much deserved 27 settlements. And he's gone from strength rank 3 to strength rank 12. That'll tell you, Deathmaster, to pull your head out your ass. And actually do something a bit fucking sooner, you dumbass. You'd have done that, we'd be able to stop this. But no, I'll just sit in south and hide in my little provinces and do nothing. Right, I'm going to call this episode here, otherwise it's going to get on quite a bit again. So um, I'll be back with probably the last part in the next episode. And we'll see where it brings us finality-wise and see if the AI does do anything remotely useful. Um, but I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you are new around here, please drop me a subscription. It helps grow the channel, and I really appreciate it. If you want to get any of my links, the stuff's in the description down below to all my stuff. And if you leave me a comment down below, I will get back to you. Take care, everyone, and have a great day.